first thing I like to do is to bring up our force time curves just to see what the data looks like. And right away, I think we can all agree that there's a difference between uh, our standard walking data and, and our running data. I think we, if you remember, we had the double hump curves for the uh, for the the walking data, and here we can see that it's uh, one single curve that we're uh, we're looking at. Um, so let's go through and average this data just uh, like we did with the walking data. Again, you can include the first and last, but if we look at our data here, we can see that most of it's fairly consistent here, but then we start seeing a drop off here, which is probably a deceleration phase that's happening. So we'll probably look at getting rid rid of you know three or four of our uh, of our stances uh, for both feet at the end. So take the four off. And we'll do the same with the other foot. And now we have our force time curves. And we can see a little bit more what that curve actually looks like. So when we had the 25 foot strikes before that, when before the average, they all looked like they were just going up and down. But now we can get a bit more information as to what the what those force curves look like. And in this case, we can see a, low, a, a high um, initial loading from the heel strike plateau and then a max point here at the, at the top. And um, sometimes it's nice to, to be able to play that back to see what it, what it looks like. But um, in this case, um, this, this plateau could be attributed to the type of, of shoe that's being used. Maybe it's a, a bottoming out of the, the, the cushioning of the shoe and then it bottoms out and we get more loading, obviously, with um, the uh, progression of, the, uh, uh, of the, um, the forces and the body weight going to the forefoot at, the, at its peak and then the offload that occurs. Again, we can look at, at differences in terms of the duration of, that, of these um, stance phases for, for running as well. To look at for any symmetries is one foot on the ground longer through stance phase than the other. In this case, it doesn't look like they are. They're, they're pretty similar. But we do see a bit of a chain, a difference in terms of the amplitude of a force, of the forces, uh, force time curves here. Um, again, we can break this down into a three box if we wanted to go specifically to look at um, uh, the heel versus the metatarsal head area. And again, we can modify our boxes slightly to fit uh, the area that we want to focus on. modifications and then again we can start looking at each the left foot we can look at our heel loading versus our forefoot loading and see if there's any differences between those two uh, we can bring up our report and this will give us that indication of a bit more information related to where that we can uh, use our, our bar graphs just to look at any differences in terms of forces. So we're seeing in total foot, for the total foot, we're seeing a bit more force on the right side versus the left. Uh, but if we look a bit more specifically to the heel in the metatarsal area, we actually see a drop in the heel on the right side and where that force is, where those forces are, are amplified is more on the metatarsal head area. So maybe you know, just a little harder push off on the right side versus the left. Then we can look at that where those, those two curves are crossing again to see there's any differences in this case it's uh, the left foot crosses at 33 percent um, and the other side at 28 percent so a slight uh, slight difference there um, but for some of the athletes maybe force time integral is or impulses is, uh, is of interest as well um, because we do see a difference in amplitude uh, in this case we might be seeing uh, a little bit of a higher uh, impulse from the right side versus the left uh, which is uh, if you're training athletes and you want them to become more symmetrical for whatever reason in terms of how they're generating a force uh, both on the left side and the right side maybe this is where you might use or the type of primer you might use to work on that type of, um, uh, of training maybe changing some of some of the ways that are positioning and things like that and uh, if we go and look at the center of force progression, we can do the same thing we were doing with the walking. If we bring up our uh, center of force and we progress through each stance phase here. Let's get to one here. Now we can 
bring this back and look at how that center of force progresses frame by frame again. And initially right here, we can see another quick jump, a little bit quicker on the right side from heel, from the heel strike to the metatarsal head loading. And then there's a catch up that occurs uh, after that uh, from, the, from the left side, which is interesting. So um, the same type of uh, the same type of uh, analysis that we're doing with with just the traditional gait or walking data, you can do the same with with running as well to look at any asymmetries in terms of force time or center of force uh, uh, progression. Um, uh, you can even look at from the three box. We just go back to that. I forgot to bring up the table. But we'll bring up the tables for you just so you can see uh, that there's there's uh, a direct uh, comparison left to right in terms of the uh, parameters in the table as well, so that you can take a look at that as well. So our center first and force excursion, our excursion indexes, you can look at the, any of these differences as well, like running data as well. One of the other things I wanted to just introduce here is, uh, is we've got our, our standard three box comparison. Now, um, it works for gait, it works for running. Um, it may not work for other types of activities. So we, you do have the ability in the software to uh, create your own boxes as well. And I just wanna do that real quick, especially for certain sports where maybe the entire foot is is not of interest. It's more of a specific location under the foot that you would be uh, interested in. So we can just click on a box here. Um, let's make a new graph with this one. And now you can see there's a box that's generated. We can focus really on to the first metatarsal head if we wanted to and, and uh, create a box, uh, or pardon me, create a graph that's just gonna look at that specific area rather than looking at the entire force time curve. It'll just really look at that entire, that, that specific area. Then we can do the same thing on the other side if we're, we're really interested in seeing. And we can graph it right on the same, uh, on the same graph if we like. And kind of get this, an idea of that specific area on the left side versus the same specific area on the right side and see if there's any differences. And here you can see amplitude differences uh, in terms of uh, um, the left side versus the right. The right's obviously generating a lot more force on, on that specific area of the foot versus uh, versus the left, which can be interesting if, uh, again, you're looking at techniques and the way people are performing certain tasks. So 